good afternoon. Uh, my guest today is Andres Pereiras. He works for GPS Consulting. And the topic today is going to be amino acid supplementation. First, welcome, Andrew, to the, to the podcast. Uh, well, thank you, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to have a conversation with you, Dr. Bill. And we'll, yeah, I'm excited for this. Well, first, like I said, this is going to be on amino acids. Just when, uh, first, what amino acids do you tend to supplement, and under what situations? Well, I, I work a lot with uh, methionine, and I consider it a nutrient, as a, a required nutrient, not an additive. And so I, I, I uh, usually feed methionine to the entire herd, including uh, pre-fresh, fresh cows. Um, I usually don't feed it to the dry cows. Uh, so that's, I think, the most important one that I do. Uh, the other one important that I look uh, very strongly into is lysine. Uh, I don't specifically uh, feed too much lysine per se, but I like to actually be very precise on what the numbers I'm hitting on that amino acid as well. Um, there, is, there has been a lot of talk lately on the branched chain amino acids, on leucine, isoleucine and valine and their importance as well. So actually lately I've been looking closely to my numbers on that and trying to actually figure out where I'm I'm sitting on all my herds on those numbers and try to match what the cows are telling me regarding to those as well. Uh, any any interest in histidine? I I do and I did I, I did a I did some work on histidine in, in graduate school not with histidine specifically protected histidine per se but mostly with measuring it with canola meal. Uh, I I like the idea of histidine. I just don't know if it's worth the cost currently in a large production, uh, in large large production situations, large herds, to talk too much about histidine with them right now. If if the cost and the production capabilities of histidine could go down, then we could probably go and talk more about it. On on uh, methionine, do you use just a model to use it uh, to figure out uh, inclusion rates, or do you pretty much just think it's a essential component of a diet and add it at a more or less fixed amount? I like uh, I I've been very successful using the relationships between energy and methionine in my diets, and it's a relationship that that came out of Cornell uh, a few years ago, and I've been very successful using that. So for lactating diets, I try, try to manage my methionine to be on that, uh, on that ratio recommended by Cornell for grams of methionine per megacalories of energy. So that's how I like doing it. Okay. Does, does, um, well, we'll get to pre-fresh diets in just a minute, but in general, do, does this, to get the, the right ratio, energy ratio, does it require RP methionine or can you do it with, with basal ingredients? For methionine specifically, I have a really hard time doing it just with basal ingredients. I usually have to use some protected form, but it also depends on the amount of milk that the herd is making too to be to compensate economically as well uh, i'm a big fan of methionine and i think it's needed but economically speaking we also have to think about that as well everything we do has to has to pay yeah. um well in in pre-fresh you know just on a pure methionine basis cows shouldn't need any methionine but the research showed pretty consistent benefits of pre-fresh supplementation about how much do you feed and what, what benefits do you think you're getting from it? It's a, it, it's a complicated topic, right, on pre-fresh, but having some good conversations with professors at the University of Illinois and, and some other researchers that are doing a lot of studying on that case, uh, it tells us that methionine is required... Um, basically, what I'm thinking is if we're feeding... Uh, if we're not feeding enough methionine, methionine is being utilized by the immune cells and by several other parts of the body, and we're just lacking that for 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 the for the prefresh animal to develop the calf and to develop 
the the cow as well, right? Um, so my thoughts are, I, I'll feed a little bit, see how how the cows react, and see if I'm getting some good fresh milk to start after that. I usually I usually try to feed between around ten and twelve grams per day of methionine to to these uh, to this specific type of animal. And I just try to see if I'm getting some good fresh milk, if there's anything else that's the bottleneck on that farm, or if methionine is being the mod- bottleneck when feeding on pre-fresh. So milk, for early, early lactation milk is your primary metric for uh, pre-fresh methionine? Yes, I, I like to focus on that, but I also like to focus on which they're related, but it's animal health after the animal calves. See if they're getting fast back fast enough from cleaning their placenta, cleaning their uterus, just just that quicker return to a high producing cow. That's what I'm looking at. You, you, you see any benefit or do you follow, I don't know, it may not be your, your job, but do you follow calf health or? I don't follow much calf health. Uh, to be honest, because I don't focus much on that in my position, but I do focus a lot on colostrum management and colostrum quality, and I've seen some benefit on on feeding uh, methionine to that. Also, not not a topic right now, but we can talk a little bit about choline, and I've seen some good benefits of feeding choline uh, personally to uh, pre fresh cows in the colostrum quality and quantity after they calve. Yeah, there's uh, you know a couple at least one paper on that as well. So was, and I'm glad to see people starting to concentrate on nutrition and, and colostrum, both yield and quality. It's an important metric. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit milkpay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Are your typical pre-fresh just the straw-based ones, or do you modify methionine for different pre-fresh diets? I, I'm that type that I like to keep it simple, Dr. Rice. Uh, I use uh, heavy diets heavy in straw, and uh, negative decad in my in most of my diets. I've I've played a little bit with some calcium binders as well, but they also have a lot of straw in their diet. And if if it's working, I won't mess with it. <laughs> if the team is working, I won't mess with it. So that's why I keep I like that high straw diet. And then the the last question would be what what crude proteins do you shoot for for the for the pre-fresh, and did you change that at all when you started with ironing supplementation? I've changed it a little bit where I increased it uh, a little bit to what I used to do. Um, I look at MP, I look at metabolizable protein, and I try to keep it there in, the, in, that be, in between uh, 13 to 1350, 100 grams, so 1,300 grams of MP. Uh, with feeding the methionine, I'm... I'm seeing my diets are a little bit higher than that, so close to that 1,400 grams of MP. Haven't seen any detrimental effects of doing that, so it's been working well. Oh, thank you very much. This has been an interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you for your time.